Hello friends, welcome back to Heartscapes, where we're learning the systems of Reiki and soul collage to be grounded, spacious, to be connected, and to remember ourselves. My name is Michaela, welcome back to the studio. This video is part two of a kind of year in review and visioning to the year ahead series. Uh, I put out videos like this last year and they seem to be supportive and helpful for other folks thinking about how to uh, conceive of a small Reiki business. And it was certainly helpful to me to do that review of the past year and kind of put uh, some structure around the visioning for the coming year. And so I wanted to do that again. I'll put the link down below to the 2023 year in review video that was put out last week. And we're gonna pick up here with some visioning for the year to come. This is the time uh, heading towards midwinter for dreaming and visioning. In the world, it's the time when seeds have fallen to the ground, they've sunk into the moist, cold soil, they have gone to sleep, the hard surfaces of those seeds have begun to soften, to expand, to make more space for the potential that is buzzing within those seeds. It's not yet time for those seeds to sprout. It's not yet time for that potential to be expressed. It's the time to germinate, to dream, to vision. And so we can take that energy into our own lives. And we see that in the uh, way in which January is often seen as the time for making vision boards, making resolutions, and kind of looking to the year ahead. My one point of caution, however, is that our culture tends to put a lot of pressure on us to hit the ground running, to start off the new year by jumping right into those resolutions, to doing the things on our vision boards, to really jumping into action. And this piece is not well seasonally aligned because again, winter is the time of rest, of reflection, of dreaming, of restoration. And so if you're feeling any of that urgency, any of that tension between this dreaming visioning time, and the kind of cultural imperative to hit the ground running. <clears throat> I just wanna affirm that you are uh, well attuned to what is going on and that you can find ways to soften that for yourself and just be aware of what you're taking on in this time in the aspect of doing. I did a whole class on this topic because it's just really alive for me right now and I'll put the link to that um, recording down below as well if you wanna dive more into that. So in the spirit of that, I've spent the last couple of weeks in a um, couple of different forms of visioning processes in kind of my personal life and my business life. And the business life, of course, is what I wanna share with you today. In the 2023 in review video, I went into a little bit of the structure of my business and kind of how it came to be. I'm not gonna repeat that here, but if you're interested, you can check it out over there. For this video, um, I wanna just really walk you through my step-by-step -step, uh, vision, goal, quasi-strategic plan coming up for 2024. <clears throat> Gosh, I can hear in my voice that I'm, that I'm still a little bit sick. I put off making this video because I've been sick this week, but it just, it had to be done. So apologies if my voice is a little off today. I'll do my best to stay, to stay centered with it. Okay, so the visioning structure that I used was shared with me by a colleague, and uh, I find it to be a really lovely combination of heart and mind, of firm and flexible, and how it allows me to engage in strategic planning. Um, I am a very airy, visiony, floaty kind of person in general. Structure is really challenging for me. And we'll see that um, on my goals for this year. <clears throat> and so it's really been helpful for me to have this structure that again has flexibility and heart um, built into it while also giving me some containment for the thousands of ideas that bounce around in my mind all the time. So a little bit about that structure. It begins with going through the principles that um, I want to guide me in this year. And principles, essentially, we can think about that as how do I want to feel as I am engaging in my business throughout the year? Um, different than values, which is a, a different set of kind of foundational uh, structures that form, you know, how I do my business. But this is more in this period of time, how do I want to feel and how do those feelings help me make decisions about my business? So then from those principles, I take a look at six different categories of activity 
and you know have just brainstormed what has the highest priority for me in this year um, in those categories. Priority is an interesting thing. It's both a point of firmness and flexibility for me. Um, I am aware that in all likelihood, I won't get everything on this list done. And that's okay. That was certainly the case last year. Um, I build that into my plan because I know that I need to have a certain amount of flexibility to kind of follow whims, follow energies, follow, you know, things that come up that might make me take on this project versus this project, or maybe let this one go because it doesn't feel as alive as it did when I thought about it in the beginning of the year. And so this list is intentionally ambitious. It's intentionally full, um, giving me lots of space to move and to flex within it. And the key to kind of managing a system like that is to not be too attached in my heart to any particular thing, uh, because I know that in all likelihood, there'll be certain things that shift and move or maybe even disappear off the list. So there's a little bit of like expectation management in that. Um, but I find that it works well for me. Other people find that it works better for them to be much more um, realistic and constrained about what they uh, commit to. And so I think for me, it's less about commitments and more about possibilities. Um, and then on a month by month, quarter by quarter basis, I can focus in on, okay, what are those commitments and expectations in this given time based on this list? So I hope that makes sense. Um, this kind of idea of having a more flexible, larger container and then refining it as we move through the year. It's just how I have to work. And we'll see some of that reflected in the fact that there are projects on this year's list that were rolled over from last year's list, um, some of which just did not get completed last year and are kind of taking another uh, place in line for this year, and others that um, did get completed to the degree that I wanted to last year and that are now being expanded and growing this year. Um, so I'll make note of those things as we get to them. So the other kind of structural piece that has been really helpful for me in thinking about how I want to design my year um, that I'll just share on the front end as part of the, the overall structure is that I took a look at patterns. What are my personal patterns of behavior, of personality, of thinking that have governed how I've made decisions in the past you know, handful of years, this past year, and that are rolling into this year. Some of those patterns are ones that have served me really well, patterns that are either natural to me or that I have cultivated because I know that I need them, that are really strong, that, that help me out in uh, running my business and growing it and getting it to where I need to be um, in the future. Other patterns are not so helpful. <laughs> There are other patterns, most of these being in the area of subconscious behaviors and, um, you know, just patterns of activity and of thinking that have been with me for a long time that, you know, when applied to this context, just really do not serve me. And so, you know, anytime we are thinking about designing a structure for our life, so business plan is a structure for our life, um, this applies to any structure of our life. It's really beneficial for us to take a moment to look at patterns in our life and to, you know, just do an honest assessment. Um, are these patterns serving me or are they not? Do they have to be this way or could they change if they could be better? As it turns out, the system of soul collage is a really powerful uh, structure, a really powerful practice for doing exactly that. And I have used my soul collage practice in this process of designing this year plan. So I'm not going to go into all of the details of that, but there are two patterns that I just wanted to highlight because they'll show up in some specific places on this plan. So a pattern that has been supportive to me in my business and that I intentionally cultivated is moving towards more structure. As I said before, I tend to be very airy, very fire sign, air sign, very visiony, head in the clouds, thousands of ideas at the same time. Um, you know, kind of scattered, like going in a lot of different directions as one, at once. And that does not serve me well in my business. And it's an aspect of myself that I, that I totally accept. It has amazing gifts uh, of, in forms of creativity, in forms of spontaneity. I'm never bored. Um, it has a lot of gifts for me. But when it comes to designing and running my business, it does not always serve me well. There's times when it does, but there's times when it absolutely does not. And so what I've had to do, you know, beyond 
you know, firstly coming to terms with and accepting those parts of myself. You got to do, you got to do that internal work first, um, coming to love those scatterbrained parts of myself and then saying, okay, how can I, uh, uplift the benefits of that part of myself and then bring in some structure to help contain it so that my business does in fact move forward in a coherent way, in an effective way. Disclaimer. I am still absolutely learning and working on this. Uh, my business is not where I need it to be success wise, finance wise, um, but it has grown steadily and it's on a good pace. And a lot of this is because of my efforts to develop structure. So we're gonna see that play out in this plan. One of the patterns that was interesting to me that I wasn't expecting to notice um, but you know, this is why we take a moment, we take a pause to, to pay attention because oftentimes patterns are not noticed, right? They're in the subconscious. They're just kind of running in the background. So I was a little surprised to see this pattern come forward. And I'm so glad that it did because it gives me a chance to correct because it is absolutely getting in the way of uh, certain aspects of my business that I want to develop. And that's a particular pattern that came out of our collective recent experience with COVID-19. It's a pattern of um, depersonalizing the work. So, you know, in other words, during that time of 2020 and into 2021, uh, you know, in-person business shut down. My business shut down completely for about four months. Um, and when I came back, uh, obviously had to have pivoted to online versions of my offerings. And I'm, I'm grateful to that because I now have online versions of my offerings and I've gotten very savvy and very skilled at providing online services. It's also expanded my reach, you know, my ability to connect with all of you in ways that um, didn't before. Uh, I really started this YouTube channel during that time, or at least kind of committed to actually engaging with it, putting videos on it, because it was a way to be connected uh, with all of you when I wasn't able to call people here to the studio to gather in the ways that I had been before. But what I noticed is that that pattern has become very strong, the pattern of always deferring to online content online marketing, online ways of connection, connecting with folks. And it's become out of balance uh, because I have this beautiful studio space and I have this vibrant community that I live inside of. And that for the first several years of my business was the entire focus of, you know, where I was putting my energy. And my energy is now very diffused from my local community. It's very much focused here into the online spaces and into the places beyond my immediate location. And that has detrimental aspects to me personally. I'm, I feel less connected to the people around me and I miss those joyful gatherings. I miss holding ritual and holding classes and holding ceremony and holding tea parties here in the studio. I have certainly reintroduced a lot of those things. Um, since 2021. Um, but what I noticed in the pattern is that it's just much, much less than it was before. And when I think about designing curriculum, my mind immediately goes to online um, offerings. And so that's a pattern that I want to interrupt um, for me personally, but also for my business, because my in-person Reiki session business has plummeted. It has not come back after uh, the pandemic. The majority of my business is focused on teaching, is focused on holding spaces, um, facilitating ritual, facilitating classes, facilitating experiences. But an important part of my business and the beginning point of it um, is in-person Reiki sessions, um, healing sessions with folks. And that aspect of my business has not come back. It's not come back alive um, to, to anywhere near the degree that I would like it to after the shutdown of the pandemic. Um, and I don't think that's because people don't want that service. I think it's because I have shifted my attention away from it. So that is a pattern that I want to challenge, um, in this year. And we'll see that show up in my 2024 plan. Okay. I think that's plenty of context. Let's go ahead and jump in to what is in store here at Hardscapes in 2024. So for 2024, the principles that will be informing my behavior and my choices throughout the year uh, that indicate how I should feel are as follows. First, I wanna feel spacious, 
defined as room to breathe and enjoy the process without stress or pressure or overwhelm as much as possible. Second, I want my work to feel dynamic. I want it to feel positive and full of imagination and vision, and I want to be nimble to change. I want it to feel aligned, aligned with my purpose, aligned with my values, aligned with my you know, unique contribution and to what I call the heart of heartscapes. And lastly, I want it to feel abundant. I want it to feel resourced. I want it to feel aligned with the world in a way that allows resources to flow in and out of this space in a way that nourishes all of us. Yes, I mean financial resources. I also mean community. I also mean uh, moments and experiences and other forms of resources in all of its magic. So that's how I want to feel in this time. And those feelings, hopefully, if all goes well, will help to uh, guide my decision making. The uh, priority categories then that uh, we are divided into are things that I want to teach, things I want to create, things that I want to lead. And then in service of those things, things that I need to build and to learn in order to facilitate those other categories happening. So let's begin with things that I want to teach. So rolling over from last year, um, I talked in the last video about the development of our year program for delivering a comprehensive Reiki education. The last two years, we beta tested that program. We ran three cohorts. It was magical and amazing. I decided to commit to the model longer term and to refine it, to make some adjustments based on those uh, beta tests and refine it to a nine month program. And so this year, teaching that nine month program um, in its fullness through two cohorts, begin two cohorts a year, uh, is a primary point of focus. And I wanna have a minimum of six to 10 people in that program for this year for each of those cohorts. Secondly, um, and this one is uh, really, it's, it's new and old at the same time. I am focusing on reinstating the practice of soul collage as a primary offering of Heartscapes. Soul collage was, ac was actually the first um, offering that I learned and that I built into this business. And then Reiki came alongside. Um, they are two very different practices, Reiki in the realm of meditation, of energy work, of healing, and soul collage in the realm of imagination, of creativity, and of psychology. Uh, but the two of them are actually working towards the very same aims, integrating all parts of ourselves so that we can remember the wholeness of our true self. They beautifully work together, and I love creating content that brings the two of them together. I chose at a certain point to focus on Reiki to help ground my business. I think that was the right choice, um, keeping Soul Collage kind of um, coming alongside for a while. But then again, in 2020, when everything went uh, virtual, um, I just, I didn't carry Soul Collage into the virtual space. It just didn't feel right to do that, at least at that time. And so that part really went to sleep. It went into dormancy. So it's feeling, mm, it's feeling juicy. It wants to come back. And I'm, I'm just really alive in my imagination with um, ways to do that. And so there'll be a number of offerings coming back into form um, in the realm of soul collage. Um, the way that all of that will be structured, I'll talk a little bit about um, a little bit further on. And then lastly, in the area of teach, I want to expand my guest teaching. Um, and this is directly in alignment with wanting to confront that pattern of going virtual. Um, I want to focus on guest teaching in in-person spaces. So in my local community, you know, within an hour or so of my home, um, certainly also guest teaching and, and kind of collaborating with people outside of my region online, always open to that. Uh, that will definitely continue. But really putting the emphasis on actively connecting with in-person spaces where I can come and share a little piece of what I'm up to. And that, uh, you know, serves a variety of functions. Certainly it provides a marketing function of, you know, hey, I'm here. Here's some amazing things happening right down the way at Artscapes. 
Um, and personally, just bringing back that sense of connection and aliveness in those in-person spaces and of potentially building longer term um, collaborations, connections, allies uh, in my local community, um, collaborating with uh, organizations, with facilitators that you know, have a uh, resonance, a simpatico with the types of people that we're working with, but that are doing that in different ways are very alive uh, collaborations to get involved in and they can be very rewarding. They can also be very challenging, which is one of the reasons why I haven't done it as much. Um, but that is definitely a place I want to focus and Happy to say already, just in the first couple of weeks here of the of la the end of last year and this year, got a couple of those lined up. Just this past weekend, um, I facilitated a soul collage experience for a fairly large group of people gathering for a birthday, and that was really lovely. Made some good connections there. Um, I've applied to do some teaching at the Northern California Women's Herbal Symposium, which is a gathering that I love to attend, um, so I'm hoping to do some teaching there. I have uh, arranged to teach at Harbin Hot Springs um, coming up in the near future. So some of those things, seeds already planted, and I've got a list of other places that I want to approach um, for the same reason. So looking forward to teaching outside of this beautiful studio in maybe your beautiful studio. Uh, if you're in the area, invite me in. I'd love to collaborate with you. Okay. So moving on to things that I want to create. Um, and here I want to start with um, what I want to create in service of strengthening that pattern of structure. So um, again, this was something I, I literally had to learn how to do through my business coaching program because I was so unstructured, just so just follow the whim, follow the intuition. So lack of structure. Uh, and so it's it's been a journey. It will continue to be a journey probably the rest of my life. Um, and so I continuously have to look back at, hmm, you know, where are the places that feel a little mushy, that feel like I'm confused. Confusion is a big indicator to me that there, that this is a place that needs more structure. And one of the places I was feeling a lot of confusion was in scheduling my offerings. I've got all of these different classes in different realms, soul collage realms, Reiki special topics, Reiki central classes, community ritual, um, all of these categories of things that I want to offer. And they're all just floating around and to like pin them down on the calendar in time to actually market them and share them has literally been a struggle, right? It's literally my natural inclination to be like, oh, I want to teach a thing. Great. Let me do it next week. Put it on the calendar. Oh, crap. There's not enough time to get people there in that period of time. Or I'll pin it down way in the future and then I'll forget about it. <laughs> you know, and I won't do anything about it. So aligning my scheduling of you know, classes and of offerings with my marketing schedule is super important, right? Because that's how that's how business operates, right? The business is trying to connect with people and marketing is how we do that. Marketing is connection, right? Marketing is uh, reaching out and, and letting people know that we're here. So uh, for the first time, that's not true. I have attempted to do this in the past. I just didn't do it very well. I did not create a scheduling structure that actually functioned well. I think I possibly maybe have done it <laughs> this time. <laughs> a structure that feels both firm and flexible, where there's plenty of room for those spontaneous things to come through, but there's also a rhythm. This was something that a colleague, actually the same colleague who offered me this uh, strategic planning structure when I was you know, kind of venting about, about the need for this. She's like, don't think about it as boxing yourself in, right? Because I think that's always my fear. If I create too much structure, I'm going to feel constrained. I'm going to feel boxed in. I've worked on that a lot. So I don't feel quite so, so boxed in. But she said, instead of thinking about it that way, think about it as creating rhythm, right? Creating patterns, creating a sense of um, consistency, Right. And that the rhythm of a piece of music 
will have variation. It'll have spontaneous little pieces that come in that are delightful, but underneath that is this rhythm that helps it stay organized and helps the listener or the students, the clients, um, kind of know where to step into that rhythm, right? To be able to locate themselves in it, to, to feel you know that they're being held inside of that rhythm. That's true of music and it's true of our calendar schedules. It's true of a lot of things, I would imagine. So I went through last week and I said, okay, I've got several main categories of offerings. So Soul Collage, the Reiki main program, the nine month program, Reiki special topics classes, community gatherings, and then as a kind of passion project, garden and kitchen offerings. And those large categories are broken into little short offerings, um, practice circles, my monthly free class, um, just little kind of drop in things, longer offerings, day long classes, weekend classes, multi week classes. And um, then also further broken down into things that are offered monthly things that are offered quarterly, and bi yearly in the case of the nine month program. So taking all of those structures, <laughs> I put them into a 12 month plan. And I have to tell you, it felt so good to look down at this just handwritten, I always have to do things handwritten, uh, breakdown of the rhythm of the coming year. And the way that it looks is that each quarter has a soul collage class, a Reiki special topics class, and a um, community gathering. Then inside of each month, there's the little shorter monthly offerings. And then the things that happen occasionally, uh, like the nine month program launching twice a year, those fit in. And the way that it ends up is that every month of the year has something, but no month of the year has too much. And that's what was happening before. There would be gaps of time when I had no offering scheduled and it would be like, oh crap, I've got Let's be honest, no income coming in for two months unless I can drum up more Reiki sessions. Um, and then there will be other times of the year that were just packed. That was just way too much happening, too much to market, too much to facilitate. And that was just so dysfunctional, right? Because in those packed times, uh, it would be really hard to get people there because there was just too many things that I was trying to market at one time. And then, of course, there's these big gaps. And so now each month, each quarter, each year has this rhythm that distributes the offerings in a way that's predictable, but still allows me creativity. And as a result of that, I was able to sit down over the last couple of days and schedule the next six months of classes. They're almost all up on the website and in Eventbrite and on Facebook. It's, it's wild. <laughs> and so because that's already done, I'll be able to make flyers. I'll be able to make, you know, a, a quarterly schedule that's all coherent. Anyway, it structure begets more structure is what I'm saying. It's going to be much, much easier to communicate out to the world the amazing things that you can do here at Hardscapes in a way that eases my kind of frantic attention and that makes things flow more better. So I have high hopes. Um, the trick will be, can I stick with it? <laughs> Because I tend to have these bursts of inspiration around, okay, I'm going to do it this way, and then I lose track of it. And so one of the benefits of it being so coherent over such a long period of time is that I am able to schedule that out while I'm here in the burst of inspiration, and that kind of settles me into that structure. So I'm feeling pretty optimistic about it. Maybe we'll check in about that in a little ways. If you're watching this video, you know, around June or July, you know, feel free to drop a comment down below. Say, hey, how are you doing with that structure? Have you, uh, have you fallen off the, the wagon yet? Hopefully not. Okay. So moving on in the category of what I want to create, this is the biggest category, um, in the strategic plan. So this one is a continuation of something that got formalized last year. So I, I talked, um, in the last video about developing a pilot, a beta test for my Reiki teaching apprentice program. Um, something that had long been on my heart to have a structure, um, a formal program where I can teach people my teaching methodology for teaching Reiki. 
Um, it's a methodology I've developed over many years. I'm very proud of it. It's very effective. And for those who want some instruction, some support, some learning around teaching skills specifically, uh, I wanted to have something formal available. And so I beta tested that last year with my very first teaching apprentice. It was a lovely experience. We're still wrapping up the last piece of it. And so this year, the goal is to formalize that. So what that looks like is, you know, create a space on the website, um, you know, get some testimonials from my current um, apprentice and put that into my marketing and what I'm sharing out. It's not a huge priority as far as like seeking out apprentices, right? Because in, in theory, for the most part, any teaching apprentices I work with are going to be people who have come through my program. So the marketing side of it is going to be more in inviting and kind of making that option available to people who are interested in teaching, who are already connected with me. Um, but you know, I will not discount the possibility that by having a more strong formal presence that other people who are seeking opportunities to teach Reiki might find their way to it. So in other words, it's it's an area that will be easy to, to codify at this point because of doing the beta test and that I don't have to put a lot of uh, marketing energy into. So that that feels nice. It'll be a It'll be a solid win for creating something that I feel really good about, but not one that I have to spend a lot of additional energy on once I create the web page. It's that's basically what's necessary for that at this point. Nextly, I want to continue to develop evergreen online courses. So I talked about um, creating my first kind of self-paced um, evergreen course in Thinkific, which was the cultivating a trauma-informed Reiki class. It's a self-paced class people can register for at any time and it's all pre-recorded and y'all know y'all know the structure it's a it's a common structure um for people to put out there and i've been wanting to do it for a long time again my head is a buzz with all kinds of plans for ideas for classes to do um, but it actually requires a significant amount of effort and energy to create the content, to create it well, to make it look professional and put it together and think of it in a way that flows. So I want to keep my expectations um, manageable for that. And I've been thinking about, you know, a lot of ways to kind of streamline that process in a way that feels good. So my goal for this year is to add up to three new evergreen courses that are created specifically for think Ethic. And then also from now on, when I do a live class to record it, record it in a way that keeps the participants anonymous and in a way that can be edited into a class and then have that available for people who want to purchase a replay. So it's just a way to create some, um, you know, income and some ways of connecting with folks and ways of sharing magical things with them that is delinked from my time and that uh, people can drop in anytime according to their own schedule. So I'm really excited about the possibilities there. Um, and there's a couple specific topics that uh, I'm gonna focus on creating first. I'll share about those in another video. So the last two in the category of create are products that I want to create. Um, and I talked about both of these in the last video because these are both things that did not get completed in 2023. Um, one of them, it's really silly that I haven't completed it. Uh, it's really just about pulling pieces that are already created together into a more coherent form. And that's in my manual for my Reiki 3 Chimpanin class. Uh, I have a number of materials that I share with students in that class, and I just need to bring them together in a, in a more um, coherent form. Um, so it's, it's kind of a lot of editing and a little bit of writing and, you know, formatting and such. So, um, kind of a good project for, you know, curling up on a, on a rainy day. So maybe while it's still winter time, I'll, I'll, uh, find the seasonal appropriateness to work on that project. Um, I would like to get that completed, uh, this year, the materials are there, they're available. They're just not in the format that I want them to be in. Uh, the bigger project in content creation is on creating a formal book out of the manual that I created for the trauma-informed Reiki class. Um, I put a lot of work and effort into writing that manual. I'm really proud of it. It's very substantial. And a number of people have asked if I'm going to make it into a standalone book that that can you know exist independent of the class. 
That is absolutely my intention. It's a huge project. Um, I don't want to self-publish it if I can help it. So that's going to involve, you know, connecting with publishers and it's just a whole, a whole thing. Um, if I end up having to self-publish, that's a whole thing that I don't, you know, have any experience in. Um, luckily there's a lot of people who do. I know a lot of people who've successfully self-published things. There's a lot of resources for that. It's definitely, of course, becoming a much more common thing to do. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of pathways to getting that done. And that in and of itself is part of what's overwhelming. There's a lot of different ways it could be done. And um, so it's really going to take dedicating some time to focus on it, to really kind of settle in to the pathway that I want to take. I've made a little tiny bit of movement on that, but um, really at the beginning of that project. So I am reinvigorating that project for 2024. Uh, I am not going to attach the expectation of completing it. Um, by the, the end of this year, I'm going to let that be open, but I would like to complete the manuscript. Um, you know, it's got, there's, there's more development of it that I need to do as far as writing and, uh, begin to make those connections around how it might get put out into the world. So that is the specific part of that project's goal for this year. So then we come to the category of things I want to lead for this year. And this is an interesting category to me because, you know, in a sense, all of the things that I'm doing, I'm leading. I mean, I'm, it's just me, right? I'm, I'm leading all of these things. So, you know, wanting to think about that more in terms of leadership outside of kind of the, the realm of heartscapes um, is kind of how I'm thinking about that. And there's one primary entry in this category, and it's one that is rolling over from last year, and that is in leading uh, several retreats. There's a couple of different retreats that I have designed that I am very excited to bring into the world. Um, three in particular, uh, the one that really came to my heart last year is to create a Kind of wellness and rejuvenation and recommitting to purpose retreat specifically for people working in social justice realms talked about this in the last video um, i really want that retreat to be funded so that those people do not have to pay for it um, i want it to be a service to people who are doing the hardest work with uh, the least reward often um, materially anyway. And so getting, um, external funding to make that happen is, is the, the main challenge for that. I may basically have the curriculum for it and, and, you know, a lot of, like a lot of the logistical pieces on, on actually delivering the retreat are more or less in place, but it's the funding that's, um, holding that up. So I want to do, put some more effort into, um, sourcing funding for that this year. It's a challenging thing to fund, um, when we're focused on kind of wellness and support for the individuals doing the work, as opposed to funding the work itself. <laughs> um, it's one of the really frustrating things about, uh, like nonprofit profit funding and so on. Um, uh, but it is what it is. And, uh, I, I, I have heart that there will be a way to do it in the meantime, though, there's two other, uh, retreats that I will be moving on um, very soon. One is the Souls on Deck retreat that I designed um, based on the writings of Clarissa Pincola Estes. I shared about that in a previous video. I'll link that down below if you're interested. Um, but there's a lot of flexibility in how that can look. Um, the other thing is I've recently been asked if I would facilitate a series of women's ret retreats. This is something that I used to do and I'm definitely very interested in doing that. I need to look more about how that looks, if that's something that happens here at the studio, which is, of course, the vastly easier way of putting that together as opposed to uh, retreats in external places. Um, that would be lovely. I would love to do that, but there's just many layers of logistics to that. So um, those are kind of what's on my mind. And so the, the idea of leading retreats uh, for different organizations, for different groups of people is uh, strongly on my heart. And something of that is happening this year. I, I am going to set that expectation. I will be leading an, a retreat, not at my studio, at some other location, um, and perhaps some retreats here at the studio as well in 2024. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited about that. The more general category around leadership, you know, really kind of loops back to building those in-person networks. Um, 
I want to step back into more leadership in my community um, and, you know, leadership in a, in a collaborative sense. Like, I don't feel any need to like go out and start anything, you know, politically or whatever, but, you know, just wanting to step more into what's happening here in my local community. And, and that again, kind of dovetails with some of the intentions that I've already set. So those are the things that I want to teach, create, lead, and to a certain extent build in the coming year. And in order to support that, the kind of um, logistical sides of that or things I wanna learn and things that I want to build, I'll just really briefly touch on those categories. Um, in the build category, I really look at that as the place where like marketing lives. So um, goals for uh, this channel, I want to increase our subscribers here on this channel to 2000. Last year, we increased from about 500 to just under 1,000. I think we're at 920 at the moment. Um, and because a uh, number of su subscribers, amount of engagement stimulates that kinky algorithm on uh, YouTube that needs to be poked and prodded in order to show your content to more people out there in the world, um, I need to increase that engagement. Um, I'm not very good at those calls to action here on YouTube. I really want to just show up and, and talk to you about what's on my heart and not implore you to please like and subscribe. But also, please like and subscribe. <laughs> um, I, I, as a person who uses YouTube very actively um, in my business and a person who consumes a lot of YouTube, it's, it's kind of my favorite place to like consume content. Um, I'm, I'm really well aware of how important it is for this to be a relationship, for there to be engagement back and forth, that it's not just me like yelling out to the void and, and it's not just you like passively receiving uh, what I have to say, um, but that there is some level of engagement. The way that I look at it as a user of YouTube is that um, YouTube is offering free content if you're not paying for the premium version that takes ads off. but most of us, I think, are using it as a free source of content. And so the way that I can pay that creator for providing that content that I find valuable is very simple. I can like the video. I can drop a comment. I can subscribe if I like it well enough that I want to see more from that person. I can share those videos with other people. Those four things mean the world to a YouTube channel because it literally generates energy, it generates momentum, it generates like vibration um, around what that person is creating and helps that vibration to move further out uh, to more people via the YouTube algorithm. Um, and so um, in terms of how I get to 2000, um, I, I, you know, being more consistent with releasing content is always something that I need to refocus on. Again, structure. Um, but, you know, being a little bit more explicit about asking people um, to engage and um, I don't know, there's probably other strategies that I'll that I'll learn uh, as I move on. Um, but hey, I'll just pause right now and invite you watching this video to like the video, drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you want to hear me talking at you anymore. And maybe share it around with somebody else who's trying to get their small business uh, going for the year uh, if they find this video to be helpful. Um, so that's YouTube. Uh, similarly, increasing my email list. Um, I really struggle with increasing email lists. I don't have the magic for that yet. So I put a much more modest um, goal on that. I want to increase it by 150 people. And then... Um, Kind of going back to, you know, again, back to the um, idea of wanting to interrupt the pattern of only pr primarily relying on digital spaces. Um, I want to go back to flyering. Y'all remember flyering where you would make a flyer about the thing that you're doing and you'd post it around town. Right? <laughs> I live in a college town, so there's still a fairly active like flyering, uh, you know, culture around here. And I used to do it a lot and I would get I would get students, you know, from those flyers. Uh, my housemate uh, just recently filled a men's retreat by flyering around town. And I think I lost track of it, um, firstly, because I think I just had the mindset that it's old fashioned and like, you know, you market online these days, you don't market 
on a flyer, you know, that's not modern. Um, but I look at flyers. When I go to a places that has a, a posting board, I look at them. I have, I have uh, used them to inform me about things to do. Uh, but the other thing is, you know, again, when, when things shut down during the pandemic um, and I was primarily doing things online, I kind of, you know, the, the whole idea of like marketing in person, which flyering is kind of a passive in-person marketing, just kind of went out of my mind. And so um, I want to build a, a habit of, of flyering in 2024. And because I am now much more structured and coherent about my offerings, I can build those flyers in advance. So I'm not always scrambling at the last minute. So that's my plan. I again have six months of um, classes, uh, most of it. I, there's a few more I need to do up on the website. And so, you know, I've already got language and images to pull down into flyers. So for the next couple of weeks, I want to be building those flyers. And then in the learn category, um, it's really strengthening my my skills and my learning around these tools that I've been using, Thinkific, YouTube, um, video editing. And one little piece that's been on my mind in the category of learning is that I wanna take some voice lessons. Uh, it's become my habit over the last, gosh, decade almost to weave little tiny songs into my teaching, um, just kind of using voice, using using song to um, be part of how I connect with folks and how I kind of touch the energy of what we're teaching. Um, I love it. It's become really important to me. I wouldn't say I have the most solid singing voice. So, uh, you know, it's passable, gets the job done, but it would be nice to have a little bit more like vocal range, a little more control over that process. And so, um, yeah, taking some singing lessons is something that I want to learn here in 2024. And um, there's a few more things on this list, but I think we have talked about quite enough. Um, that is a pretty comprehensive view about what I hope to get up to in this coming year. Um, I hope this was helpful to you, um, either in thinking about your own um, design for your own uh, projects, your own life, you know, whether it's in a business context or in a hobby context or anything else that you want to organize and plan for the year. Um, and if there's anything that I have spoken to that tickles your fancy, that feels juicy and alive for you that you might want to jump in on, then please be in touch with me. There will be, of course, links down below to uh, my website where you can find all the juice all the goodness as it's coming out here in this ye old 2024. And so we are going to rest right there. I'm going to go rest my voice, drink some tea, because that was a lot of talking on a, on a sick throat. Um, and I really appreciate you hanging with me for this little piece of time. Um, it's definitely useful to me. I hope it was useful to you. And as you step into your 2024, into your plans, to all that is on your heart to teach, to build, to lead, to create, may you be deeply provisioned for that journey. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope to see you next time. I love you. Goodbye.